welcome to the Stuart B Lake near Bedford, where after the drama of the sprint and world events, the Powerboat GP competitors are gathering for the final rounds of the 2012 British Championships. For Formula 2 Championship leader Malcolm Goodman, that means putting behind him not one, but two spectacular crashes in the world event. Malcolm, Nottingham wasn't the best of your power boating weekends. <laughs> no, no. We had a, a few little mishaps over the weekend. Well, we've all seen it on YouTube now, and it's uh, going to be on television forever now, but when, the, when those boats start lifting, how much warning do you have that you're going to become an aeroplane and not a boat? Well, sometimes the boat can take off and it can fly for a couple of seconds where it comes back down, but in that instance, the, the wind just got underneath it and just took it straight up and over. But, but you're always trimming, going down those straights, you trim the engine to try and lift the nose as far as you dare, but it's just a matter of feel, is it? Yeah. At that point, you're starting to trim in when you're hitting top speeds down the street, but as I say, the wind just got underneath, took it up. When we got the boat back after the rescue brought it in, the engine was trimmed all the way in, so at some point I had tried to save the boat. So whilst you were in the sky, you were still trying to trim the engine and save the <laughs> yeah. boat. And if, forget all that, this weekend it's the British Championship you have to win. You've still got what Alan and Ian, um, you know, breathing down your neck. It's not going to be easy. What's the plan? Uh, the plan is get out there and win, but stay safe, stay up the way, pick up the points and hopefully it'll all go my way. No aeroplanes this weekend. No aeroplanes this weekend. Malcolm's nearest challenges for the title are Alan Marshall and his own teammate Ian Andrews. Ian, this is your first serious season back in power, but it's been for 10 years since you're a Formula 3 champion. You're still in with a chance of the championship, no wins yet, but could today be the day? Yeah, I hope so. I've been, as you say, easing my way back into it, going pretty well. Looking forward to uh, giving it a real go today. And how do you find these big F2 cats? They're good. They're fun. They're very lively. Uh, a bit more lively than when I was doing it 10 years ago. But um, yeah, I'm getting used to it and hopefully building up to uh, get back to the top. top. Adam, winner of the first round of the championship this year, still in with a chance of the championship. How are you going to sort this good one out? I, I don't know if I can, sir. I'm three points behind. Uh, he's got the better engine. Uh, I'm just waiting for him to A make better mistake. engine in certain circumstances. We agree that you know, your older engine's got a little bit of pull out of the corners. It is. It's a fast. It's a fast off the off the dock, as you've seen. Uh, what I really need to do is uh, get my head into gear and uh, see if we can uh, pull something out of the bag. Malcolm extended his lead by one more precious point by getting pole position in qualifying for the first heat, with Alan back in fifth and Ian right behind him in sixth. With the combined results from three heats to decide the winner, every start is crucial. Red lights are on. And they're off, and away we go for the first set of three heats during the course of the weekend for the final round of the British National Championships. And we've got a big fleet of Formula 2 boats once again at this final event. And Malcolm Goodman knows that the championship is still not decided. And it does go down to the wire. So it's important that he gets a good result from these set of races. But it is Malcolm Goodman then out in front. And Scott Curtis in his second ever national event in a Formula 2 finds himself in second position. Balfour, Paul Balfour is in third position. So the top three are being followed by Alan Marshall, who is in fourth position. But now we ride on board with Scott Curtis, laying in that second position, chasing number one, Malcolm Goodman, who leads the race. So now we ride on board with Ian Andrews, who's right with uh, Alan. He's lost it. Well, I was going to say he was right with Ian Wright, but uh, Ian Andrews has had an accident and the boat has rolled over. And he's out of the boat. These drivers do dunk tests before the start of a season of racing uh, just to simulate an escape from a cockpit. And, uh, well, Ian Andrews is OK. And the rescue are immediately on hand. But uh, the boat then now submerges itself in the water. And there you can see the stricken boat then of Ian Andrews as the rescue are on hand. So uh, race is stopped. Now we ride on board then with Ian Wright and his uh, point of view. Well, he veers off and I think uh, that's where the contact was. And there you can see just in the background, Ian Andrews' boat uh, just falling over really, doesn't it? Uh, now from Ian Andrews' point of view once again, 
And there it is. There's the roll. And there was some kind of contact there, I think. Paul, there's a hole in your boat. That's not going to work, is it? Uh, it doesn't work very well when they're in the bottom, no. No, it's... Uh, I think that's it for the weekend for this what one. What did it's, you hit? Um, I hit Alan Marshall on my right-hand side. Uh, there's three... The, the Alan, Alan, Alan on my right and Scott on the left went into the top turn. I don't know what was on the left-hand side of Scott, but he didn't turn, Alan did. Uh, no room in the middle. We were very close with the Bolt 91, Ian Andrews at, at the top turn coming down to the right-hander. Um, I got the lead back off him. I came into the right hand, faded the boat round to take the bend. And next thing I know, Ian was crawling over the back of my boat and, and crawled over my deck and rolled over, which sent me into a spin and um, put the hole in the side, so I had to get it out as quickly as possible. So with the original race being stopped, we go into a restart and all the drivers needing to get it right this time around. And a good clean start then from everybody away from the grid. And Alan Marshall and Scott Curtis run up side by side. And there's a view from Scott Curtis's boat. And there's a view from Alan Marshall. And you can see that Curtis is running just ahead of him and Marshall just uh, goes into the corner a little bit wide there. And now Goodman is coming through. And now the boats are slowing again and uh, another problem. Another problem, and uh, it looks like another red flag situation. So the race is stopped. And they are the opinions then of uh, Alan Marshall. Wouldn't normally expect that from him, but uh, shows the frustration after this race being stopped again for that culprit there, uh, Swan, which had wandered onto the race course. It does mean then that uh, because of two restarts, that particular race is concluded and a result is drawn from that. And Goodman confirms that then with his pit crew and saying, right, that's it, that's heat one. Of all the championships to be decided today, the closest is for the 30 monos, where Ben Morse and Kevin Hill are tied on points. But who got the extra point for being on pole position? Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Edged ahead in the favourites now. Yeah, it helps. What are you going to do about that then? See what we can do in the heat. Had a pretty bad practice session. Ended up fourth. Fourth? Yeah. What is it? Good. Propellers? I think it's driver. a combination of driver and propeller, really. So we'll see what we can do in the heat. But I see you run different engines. You choose the even red that's two stroke. Yes. Ben's got the four stroke Tomatsu. Does one have an advantage in different places? Yeah, they say that the Tahatsu is a, a quicker motor on the, the longer straights and the even routes meant to be a bit better on the shorter courses and on the corners, but uh, that's what we're here to prove. Well, this is a long course, Ben, so you, once you've got your prop sorted, you just cruise past him. It doesn't always quite work like that, unfortunately. Kev seems to be reversing theory at the minute. I mean, quicker than all the Tahatsus. He's on a downer. I think you've got it. No, I think we've got, we've got a long way to go yet, too. Well, shake on it. Oh, what, mate? and made the best man win. But should either Kevin or Ben slip up, either Jordan Muckles or Natalie Craddock could still steal the crown. With it all to play for then in the final race for 2012 for the GT30 Plus, Kevin Hill gets a good start. We've got Jordan Muckles this time in a different outfit than what he's normally used to racing for the Top Cat team at this particular last event. But it's Natalie Cranick who's right up there, the British sprint champion, who uh, gained the title two months before this race. He's right up there along with the front runners. And Kevin Hill knows that he's going to be under threat from the young lady driver. But Jordan Muckles proving that he can adapt to almost any boat and still be fairly quick. Ben Morse is also there in the, the background of things, but in the meantime then, well really, it's Craddock piling on the pressure as she did all weekend with Jordan Muckles. Jordan having to uh, drive defensively, try and defend off the uh, lady driver. Meanwhile, Kevin Hill running away with uh, the victory, just making sure that he can do enough to be crowned British champion. So Kevin Hill takes the chequered flag and effectively takes the championship overall. Of course, no championship is fully won, but 
when you pass scrutineering. You sure you're not underweight now, Kevin? I, I, hope, I hope not. I haven't been to the toilet yet, so uh, we'll wait and see. It was a brilliant day. You took it cagey that last race, finished yeah. third. It was better to finish than not finish. If I hadn't finished, then... And this is your first I mean, British Championship ever? First one ever, yeah. Brilliant. Hopefully not my last. But next uh, year, more of the maybe, same? Maybe, got a couple more years left in me, so we'll, we'll keep going. So uh, congrats, Dave. Kevin Hill, British GT30 Championship. Thank you. So that's one British Championship title decided. Make sure you join us after the break when five more crowns will be claimed.